Are you guys ready for 2024 magic? Because I don't think you're ready for 2024 magic. Yep, we are back a whole 28 days after our last visit to Ravnica with the remastered set. We have Murders at Karlov Manor, and I will tell you, this set so far seems like a banger. It seems like it's a bit complex, what with disguises and suspects, we have the cases now and such. And in the midst of all this complication, we have a very simple commander to talk about today. So we have Judith, Carnage Connoisseur. Judith is a super prominent figure on Ravnica, hailing for the Rakdos Guild. And this one, like I said, is a spell slinger. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, you get to choose one of the following. That instant or sorcery gains lifelink or death touch to the end of turn, which is absolutely absurd. Or you can make a 2-2 red imp with when this creature dies, it deals 2 damage to any target. Now we will be using the second ability for quite a few cards in here, but the first one is the reason we're building the deck, because the first one is kind of bonkers. Giving everything lifelink and death touch is uh, pretty, pretty freaking good. Because that way when you play things like your end the festivities, let's say there's four other creatures on your opponent's board. For this one red mana, you will deal four damage, that will be lethal damage, you will gain four life back, and you will kill four creatures. And you know what? The math checks out. That's pretty good value. So the game plan is very simple. Burn down the opponents, gain a bunch of life, use that life to build up a board state and burn down more opponents. First things first, you put in all your burn spells, your fire, fire, fire. Uh, obviously, you have plenty of staples in this archetype. Lightning Bolt, Rift Bolt, Lightning Strike, Chain Lightning, Gut Shot, which you can pay life for. Play with Fire, Spike Field Hazard, which doubles as a land. Shock, which gets a brand new art in this set. And Electricery, which for one additional mana will become a board wipe, which is pretty good. Of course, we also have stuff like Improvised Weaponry, which will also make you a treasure token back when you cast it. And other cards like Fire Covenant. Now, Fire Covenant's actually just really fun in this deck because you're going to pay a bunch of life, but you're going to end up getting a bunch of life back. We also have the brand new Galvanized card, which has the potential to deal up to 5 damage at instant speed. This is going to be the deck that plays more board wipes than the white deck right here. As your Volcanic Fallouts shake the foundation, they're both instant speed things that just say kill all your opponent's stuff. Blazing Volley, Tectonic Hazard, and Smash to Dust right alongside with them. The previously mentioned End of Festivities. Anger the Gods, Brotherhood's End, and Boiling Earth will all belong in here. We also have Earthquake, Rain of Embers, and Tremor. Now these things I'm putting aside because they deal damage to everything, meaning they're going to kill your creatures too if you play them, so just keep that in mind. You still will gain all the life though from them, so you know, the sacrifices must be made. These cards at the top of your curve are over the top. They will gain you a ton of life back. You play cards like Blasphemous Act and Star of Extinction. Now, they are both staples in this archetype and will blow up the board and then put you in prime position to be the arch enemy for the rest of the game. Flame Wave, Fire Tempest, and Reckless Endeavor will be something that's a, li a little jank, but will get the job done in this deck. Destructive Force and Wildfire actually double and deal land destruction as well, which is super brutal to do to anyone in a commander game. But, you know, stuff happens. Burn down the house, breath of this guy, and of course the very flavorful Rakdos charm to deal massive damage. And damage is all we talked about so far. With all the spells I already mentioned, you're probably just going to want to sit here and use your uh, little lifelink and death touch, the thing you built the deck around. But for all these next cards, these are probably the modes you kind of want to make your 2-2 imp. Because these don't really deal damage, so there's no point in giving them life link or death touch. In fact, many of these cards might actually cost you life playing. Stuff like Read the Bones, Sign in Blood, or Knight's Whisper. Village Rites and its copy Corrupted Conviction will make use of sacrificing some of those imps that are laying around the board. Along with Popper Staple and Personal Favorite of Doug's Deadly Dispute. Ravnica's very own flavorful card, Bankrupt in Blood. Yeah, alongside Funeral Rites and Painful Lesson, Big Score, which would net you a little treasure token, along with some of these Spoils and Pirate Pillager cards, Flick a Coin, also dealing one damage but netting you that treasure token, and Unexpected Windfall are all great things to keep your cards flowing and get you some mana, generate some value. You also have a bunch of big expensive cards that will draw you a lot of cards and lose you a lot of life, and I'm not necessarily talking about your Necroponences here, we're talking like Peer into the Abyss. Cut of the Prophets, and Damnable Pact, you're going to get all this life back anyway, you might as well use it to help you win the game. Speaking of paying life, this is where your commander's ability really comes into play, as you're going to be gaining a ton of life with that lifelink, and the commander being in black, 
differentiates this deck from Fire Song Speaker, whatever the fuck that other card is. And your commander being in black differentiates it from other similar type of commanders and gives you access to all these cool cards. Hatred, Great Win Con, card's a bit spendy because it's on the reserve list, but if an opponent's within dying distance and you have a creature that's able to attack, it's a great thing to play, surprise your opponent, and pay a bunch of life and win the game. Greed, of course, excellent card, you're just going to pay one mana and then two life, which is pretty much nothing at this point to just draw cards. Phyrexian Reclamation, now this card is put in here specifically because it pays life to bring a card from the graveyard to your hand, so it can bring mainly your commander or anything else you want to bring back out, because the one downside to Judith is she's kind of expensive for being in the command zone. You really want to ramp up and you don't want to be paying a bunch of extra mana on like the commander tax to keep casting her. Uh, Bolas the Citadel, of course, super staple in this type of play. Xander's Pack and Nashi Moon Sage, these are both slightly jank cards that I love to play to take cards off to your opponent's deck. Bond of Agony. Now while this card does not explicitly give you life, do not give it lifelink, it will not do anything for you. Uh, it does say your opponents lose life, so if you are substantially higher than your opponent in your life total, you'll play this just like Hatred. It's just a way to win the game whenever you're within striking distance of someone. Um, creatures. Surprisingly enough, 2-2 two -two Imps will not get the job done. Uh, we have a bunch of other creatures though that will get the job done. Pestilent Spirit adds a little bit of redundancy to what your commander is already doing. Stuffy Doll and Brash Taunter, whenever they're dealt damage, they deal damage back out, which will make for excellent blockers or make for excellent targets whenever you play your Blasphemous Act or your Stars of Extinction. Heartless Hitasugu, which I'll be honest, feels pretty self-explanatory. Sulfine Mayhem Dominus, the damage doubler from Phyrexia. Excellent card, it can also give itself indestructible. Zakar the Bold is a solid card advantage creature that only costs you 14 cents these days. Nehab the Eternal allows you to gain a bunch of red mana in your second main phase. For He's comparatively cheaper than what he was before his reprint. Blood Letter of Alcazat. This card has been gaining a lot of popularity since it debuted in Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Double dips and all your damage dealt. Okay, got it out that time. Anyway, this card has been gaining a lot of popularity, allowing you whenever your opponent loses life, they lose twice that much life. On the other side of the coin, we have Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose, one of my first cards I ever started playing with in Magic. Whenever you gain life, your opponents lose that much life, so essentially allowing you to double dip whenever you deal damage straight to your opponents. Like, let's see, a lightning bolt to their face for three. Your commander makes sure you gain three life back, and then Vito sees you gain three life back, so then Vito loses your opponent three more life. And that's what we call a value. Morbid Opportunist takes advantage whenever you sacrifice or use your little imps to chump block or any other people who might die drawing you a card. There's also a very similar card being printed here in Murders of Carlisle Manor, which will also have a home in the deck. Most the Bleak Hearted, it's a big god card that allows you to draw cards by paying mana. Deck and a Dragon, this card is excellent because it's an adventure spell. The adventure side of it allows you to take cards off the top of your opponent's deck, which makes you your imp. And then, when it's played as a creature and it attacks, it makes you a treasure token, allowing you to ramp up some mana. We also have the new best card of 2024, mark my words, Crime Novelist. This little adorable goblin adds a red whenever you sacrifice an artifact, meaning that your treasure tokens essentially just sacrifice for two, by the way. But whenever you sacrifice an artifact, he gets a plus one, plus one counter. Perfect little card. Yawgmoth Thran Physician giving us a little sacrifice outlet, allowing us to play it as removal by removing our opponent's stuff with one minus one minus one counters, and allowing us to draw cards. Speaking of black staples, you can't have this deck without Shielder the Apocalypse. Well, you can. I mean, she's like $80, so kind of a bit much. But Shielder's really good. Of course, it goes good in this deck. It deals damage and gives you life. That's exactly what our commander wants to do anyway. And lastly, a little bit of a jank spotlight, Tivash, Gloom Summoner. Now this is a 20 cent card that will allow you to make big tokens just by gaining life, which your commander already wants to do. Overall, Judas kind of a pretty nasty commander. I can't wait for this set to release on February 9th. And we get to see exactly what it can do at the commander table. Uh, it seems like it has really strong potential to just let you play cheap spells and gain a bunch of advantage off of it. I'm super excited. Merge the Carlisle Manor looks super dope. Let me know if there's any commanders you guys want to see on here. As always, there will be a little sample deck from my Architect page in the description. And uh, that's it. Uh, we recently hit over 100 subscribers, so thank you guys for that. And I will see you next time.